Aloha everybody and welcome back. In this video I'm going to share with you how I prepared and registered for finally taking the FAA Part 107 Small Unmanned Aircraft System Pilot Certification Test. I took the official exam on Monday, April 29th. Now some of you may already know if I passed or failed, and if you had been watching Scott from a Pal Hawaii Tours live stream on Monday, then you definitely know if I passed or failed. But for everybody else, you're going to have to stick around to the end of the video to find out the answer to that question. The first thing that I did when I decided that uh, I wanted to start flying a drone and using it to capture some of the amazing things around the uh, Big Island of Hawaii, um, I checked into the legal aspects of it and what was required in order to do that in a commercial capacity and discovered that I needed to be a certified remote pilot in command for a small unmanned aerial system uh, uh, by the FAA according to the Part 107 rules and regulations. And I was also required to register the SUAS, aka drone, quadcopter, whatever name you want to give it, with the FAA as a unmanned aerial system under 55 pounds. I also looked into the requirements for the state of Hawaii, the laws and regulations governing these type of aircraft here, and discovered that basically all Hawaii state requires is the um, federal, you know, certification in order to operate a drone here. But of course, you have to remember that there are some places that drones are banned, like the Volcanoes National Park. Um, all national parks, drone flights are banned there without a special waiver from the FAA and I believe the park system as well. But I don't know, I haven't looked into that, but I think I'm going to because I would love to be able to fly in the park again. Now that I knew what I had to do, I set off on a mission to figure out how to do it. Um, one of the things that I've always uh, been very good at and do enjoy is the ability to teach myself um, new things when I need to know something. However, of course, I need the reference materials, so um, I looked at the FAA's website, and of course, they had a um, basically a, a PDF that I can download, which is called the Airman Knowledge Testing Supplement for Sport Pilot, Recreational Pilot, Remote Pilot, and Private Pilot. This basically contains all the information that you would need to know in order to pass the remote pilot's uh, certification test. After I downloaded the PDF and took a really good look at it, I realized very quickly that uh, the information wasn't necessarily complex, but it was quite overwhelming and a little daunting. Um, a lot of things that I'd never seen before and had been exposed to, so I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at, to be honest with you. I will include a link down below in the description for those that will want to take a look at this PDF file and see what it's all about. After about 15 or 20 minutes looking over the information in this PDF, I come to the realization that I was most likely going to need professional help in order to fully grasp and absorb the information that I needed. So of course I went to my favorite little thing, Google, and searched up um, basically uh, an online training class that would take me step by step uh, through you know all the information that I was going to need to know to prepare me for the test which I think at this point was the best idea and I would strongly suggest anyone else that's wanting to apply for your remote pilot license uh, to basically do the same thing. Now before I continue just a quick reminder if you're enjoying this video don't forget to hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already go ahead and click that subscribe button and don't forget that bell icon so you can get notifications of new content when it's available. Okay, so after searching Google and finding some online training courses for this particular um, certification, I settled on one that seemed to be the top more advertised and recommended uh, online study school. Even though it was a little bit on the pricier side, um, I ultimately chose them because they had a guarantee that uh, really resonated with me and the guarantee was that if you completed their course um, and took the, the official test and failed that they would uh, pay for you to take the test a second time. 
Now, this was important because the actual official test is about $150 to register for the test. And if you fail it, you have to wait at least 14 days before you can retake it and you have to pay the $150 again. So based on that particular guarantee and Google's recommendation for this particular company, I decided to go ahead and sign up for their course. Now I'd like to point out real quick that the FAA only requires a knowledge examination for certification for a small unmanned aerial system. It does not require that you pass a flight proficiency exam in order to be certified. So after signing up and paying the fee to this online study course company, I was granted access to the uh, available materials that they had put together for the study course, specifically for the remote pilot certification. And I will say I was pretty pleased with what I saw. Um, after a quick review of the general course structure, it became obvious that the course was laid out in a very comprehensive and organized manner, covering each particular category that was uh, going to be examined in the official test. Later that night after dinner and having a nice cup of green tea with a little bit of lemon and honey, I was all nice and full and relaxed and decided to sit down and actually go through the first module of the study course. So over a period of three or four or perhaps a few more weeks, between making videos and completing these modules, I finally completed the uh, online course and I found that the only criticism of the course that I would actually have would be that it didn't provide enough lecture comprehension exercise questions. I mean, it, they did provide a few questions, but I really think on some of the module stuff like, you know, understanding airspace and altitudes and, you know, clearances and things of that nature, they, they should have provided a little bit more of a, um, a worksheet that you could go through and give you the ability to drill the information so that you were, you know, very familiar with it, but that would be my only criticism. Now after I completed the study modules, I was presented with the option to take a practice test in order to evaluate um, the retention of the information to see how much I learned, what, where my weak spots were. I found that uh, I could use the practice test in or to replace the lack of what I found to be the uh, worksheet, you know, comprehension, you know, questions and stuff that um, were lacking out of the actual lecture, mo lecture modules themselves. But that was okay, uh, it worked for me and um, it helped me find out where my weak spots were and so I could go focus back on those, which is exactly what the practice test is all about. I took about eight of these tests and scored higher than a 70% on every one of them. A passing score, both on the practice test and the official exam, is a 70% or higher score. There are 60 questions on the test. Since I was scoring so well on the practice test, I decided that I was ready to take the official exam. So I moved to the next step and that was to call the company that you have to call to register for uh, your local test center. Now we're at the part where things get a little interesting and frustrating as well. Please remember this is my experience and may not be typical of what you may experience going through the same process. The testing center itself apparently is the main hub for registration for all the test centers uh, across the United States, which is interesting in that fact alone. So I call them and I'm on hold. Um, five minutes go by, eight minutes go by, finally get to 10 minutes. And uh, then all of a sudden I get another message which was that uh, all their agents were currently busy and if I would please leave uh, my name, phone number, and the test that I'm applying to take, someone will call me back in 24 hours. So I left my name, my phone number, and the test that I needed to take and uh, thanked them and was looking forward to getting a call back within 24 hours. Um, 24 hours came and went and I did not receive a phone call, so I called the number again. Once again, I was on hold, waiting for the next available agent. Um, five minutes go by, eight minutes go by, 10 minute mark, here's that same message. Please leave your name, number, and the test you need to take and someone will call you back in 24 hours. So I left a second message and waited until the next day. So here we are 48 hours later and I still haven't heard back from this company. 
uh, to schedule the test. So I decide on the third day I was going to um, give them a call again. And once again, five minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, got the message. So in this case, um, I decided to do something a little bit different because leaving a third message seemed to be, well, unnecessary at this point. So instead I hung up the phone and I dialed back. And once again, you know, time ticked by, five minutes, eight minutes, and then amazingly at eight minutes and 47 seconds, some real person actually answered the phone. Believe it or not, I was a little shocked, and I think it may have came across in the first few words that I spoke to the individual, um, because I guess it kind of set the tone for the rest of the conversation, which wasn't bad. Uh, there was some communication issues, uh, spelling issues, things of that nature, so when you call, I suggest, these are my suggestions when you have to call to register for your test. One, um, when you if you end up being on hold for 10 minutes waiting for an agent and get the leave a message recording, don't leave a message. Hang up, call back. Be prepared to spend maybe 30, 40 minutes calling two or three times. Um, but I suspect what, what basically happens here is when you're on hold, you're in a queue because they say you know, your call will be answered in the order it receives. Well, there are other people behind you that are going to get that same message within you know seconds to minutes after you. So they're going to end up dropping out of the queue just like you would do. So instead, if you hang up and call back, you get put back at the back of the line, yes. But there's a very good possibility that those four or five people ahead of you are going to hit that 10 minute mark and drop out of the queue, putting you like maybe in the second or third position or even perhaps the next you know uh, person in line at least that's what I think may may be happening in this particular case so anyways be prepared for that moving on um, after about seven eight minutes worth of conversation giving my name address birth date and all that information including my, my credit card in order to pay for the test which was a hundred and fifty dollar registration fee to do so I had my test date which was for April 29th at this point, I had four days to prepare for the actual exam. I was already prepared, mind you, but I wanted to make sure that I really knew the stuff and, and was fresh on it. So what I did was Saturday, I actually took a couple more practice tests, um, one in the afternoon, one later in the evening, just to kind of, you know, keep my brain thinking about these things and, of course, pass those tests as well. Now, come Sunday, I did something a little bit different. I actually took uh, three more practice tests and I did it in a span because it took me about 40 minutes to finish the test. So I would take a test and then I'd wait about an hour, hour and a half. I would take a, the, another practice test, wait another hour, hour and a half, and then of course took the third one. And what I noticed is each time I took those tests, uh, my retention was better with the information and I was actually scoring higher and higher and higher. The uh, last practice test I took before I uh, took my actual exam, uh, I scored a 94% on, which was pretty good and made me feel really confident. So I went to bed Sunday night, you know, just content in the fact that I was going to pass this test uh, with at least a 70% or greater. Well, at least that was my hope. Test day has finally arrived and I had to get up a little extra early in order to get ready to leave because I have to go across the island to the other side, to the Kona side, in order to take the actual official exam because that is where the only test center on the island is located. And it's located over at the Kona International Airport. However, the drive between the mountains, Mount Akea and Mount Oloa, is absolutely spectacular on Saddle Road. It is just beautiful through there. So it was a pleasure to drive across. Even after stopping for a small lunch, I arrived at the test center about an hour early. It was then that I met this absolutely amazing person, the test examiner, Lisa, uh, which was running the facility that day. Absolutely amazing. She made me feel completely comfortable. She actually boosted my confidence. The environment was clean, comfortable, friendly, um, just absolutely spectacular. I, I have no complaints whatsoever about that part of the experience. So she checked me in, got the information uh, taken care of that all need to be taken care of, and uh, even uh, allowed me to take the, the test a little bit early, which helped her out because there apparently was three tests scheduled at the same um, appointment time. 
So by processing me early and getting me started, it, it gave her the ability to get the other people as they ar arrived uh, started and, and on their way as well, which really worked out for her, which of course worked out for me. The testing center provided me uh, pencil, paper, and the Airman Knowledge Supplement uh, testing booklet that is provided uh, as the reference material for the test. They also provided a calculator for any math questions that I may have encountered if I wanted to use it, and also a magnifying glass. Um, this is one point that I will stress here. Um, I have pretty decent eyesight, don't have a problem reading, but the print on these, these charts and, and things in this booklet is very, very small. Uh, I would recommend bringing your own sheet reader type magnifying glass, one that magnifies like the whole page if, if you can. Uh, you are allowed to bring certain items in like a magnifying glass, etc. It's really up to the discretion of the examiner as to whether or not that particular magnifying glass will be allowed or not. But I mentioned it to Lisa and she's like, yeah, that would be a good idea. And I even suggested that they, maybe they invest in a couple of them since they're really cheap and it would make it a lot easier than using this handheld magnifying glass to, to look at these charts. So that's the only thing that I, I would really suggest in that particular case. Whatever you bring, bring a magnifying glass. You're gonna need it. So finally, this brings us to the actual test itself, uh, which was conducted on a computer. It was 60 questions and it was a multiple choice, um, three, three possible answers. Some of the questions were a little tricky. You really gotta read these things and, and understand what's being asked. Um, so don't try to memorize test, you know, practice test or stuff like that. Uh, you need to fully grasp the, the information. Anyways, test went just fine. It took me about 38 minutes, according to the clock on the test, to actually complete it. Um, I found that the, the biggest point of anxiety that I suffered during this whole process was the very end where I had to click um, finish when I was done with the test. And then it asked me, are you sure you want to finish the test? Because at that point, there was no turning back. Whatever my score was, was my score. So after a, a few seconds of deliberation, I clicked that button and I received my score. So if you've hung out this long to hear this story and find out whether or not I passed a test, here we go. Drum roll, please. Thank you, thank you, oh wow, thank you, I, I, thank you, I, I couldn't have done it without all of y'all's support. So yes, I passed with a 88% score, so I'm very, very proud of myself. That'll bring us to where I'm currently at now in this process, and that is waiting for the issuance of my temporary flight certificate. Uh, I was able to create my account on the FAA website, apply for my airman certificate, and um, associate my test results with that application. That took about 34 hours for the test results to become available to the FAA uh, systems. So we are currently waiting for that issuance of the temporary flight uh, certificate, which I can then print out, and I will be completely legal to fly. So excited about it, uh, the wait is killing me. And then about six to eight weeks later, I'll get my actual pri or, uh, plastic um, license card, which would be pretty cool to have. And I think that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed listening to the process I went through. If you have any questions about that process, or if you're planning on getting your own um, remote pilot and command certificate, uh, leave it down in the comments below. I'll, I'll try to answer if I can. I also have some new items available, some amazing calendars and posters. You can find them in the link in the description below. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and share button if you haven't done so already. And as always, you have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening.